every Wednesday from now on, I'm gonna make a video that covers two recently published papers. My goal here is to expose people to the latest research in the field of physics. Go over it somewhat briefly, but give resources so that people can access it if they are curious further. Today, we're looking at two humble papers. Firstly, a possible revolution in the field of computing with a new logical device. And secondly, a way to potentially speed up medical experiments. The first topic today, the computing one, is based on magnetostrictive materials. These are materials where the shape of the material is related to the magnetic field of the material. In other words, you change the shape, the magnetic field also changes. It turns out that this is the reason why you hear fluorescent lights buzzing. When you have an alternating current going back and forth, the magnetic field changes, the materials stretch, and you hear a buzzing sound. It turns out that these materials can be used for computing as well. These computational devices are known as magnetoelectrics. Now, without getting into too much detail, they work as follows. A computer chip can be designed with a bunch of magnetostrictive materials, where each one has a magnetic field that either points up or down. And if you send a pulse of electricity through it, you can change the shape of these materials. And when you change the shape, it can invert the magnetic field, for example. Now, since there are two orientations for the magnetic field, these contain the ones and zeros that you would typically think of on a computer chip. So electrical pulses can be sent through the material, you change the shape of the material, you change the magnetic field, and thus you have a way to manipulate the ones and zeros in a computer. This sort of computation is really advantageous. Since there's no steady state electricity that's required, like in a regular computer, it turns out that you can use up to 10 to 30 times less electricity than a typical computer. I'll link in the description an article from Intel that describes these magnetoelectric spin orbit or meso devices in depth. The article contrasts these devices with the typical CMOS logical devices that are currently used in computers and have been used for the past 50 years or so. These materials also have a really high integration density. What that means is you can fit a lot of components in a really small space. This makes them ideal for replacing the traditional CMOS architecture of computers. So we have this way of creating these new computer chips, but of course there's a problem. And the problem is that these materials are not cheap to come by. So this is where the paper from today comes in. The authors of this paper have found a way to construct these materials using cheap substances like iron and gallium. Now, this has been done in the past, but it turns out that as soon as the gallium concentration gets above about 19%, there are issues in the manufacturing process that make it very difficult to have this alloy be in the right condition. So in this paper, the authors have used a technique known as epitaxy to boost the gallium concentration up to as much as 30%. This increases the amount of magnetostriction by 10 times the traditional iron gallium compounds. And get this, two times better than even the rare expensive compounds that exist out there. This is a huge advancement in the field of mesological devices. And it will be interesting to stay up to date with this and see how it advances the field in the future. As you know, the cost of manufacturing has a huge implication on the progress that it takes as well. Next, we're gonna completely change gears. And I'm gonna tell you something. To make flowing objects move faster, put an obstacle in their way. Now, you might think that that's counterintuitive, but is it? I mean, isn't that exactly what we do with traffic lights, with traffic in the real world? You have traffic flowing one way, traffic flowing another way, and if there were no traffic light in the middle, it would be a disaster and the flow would be really slow. By creating an obstruction with a traffic light, allowing some cars to pass and others to stop, overall you increase the rate of the flow of traffic. So how does this relate to speeding up medical experiments? Well, let's establish some groundwork here. In the past, chemists and biologists would perform experiments by mixing chemical compounds and biological compounds in a test tube They'd stir it up and they'd wait for the results. We're a lot more efficient now. We don't do these typical test tube experiments anymore. We use so-called microfluidic chips, about the size of a postage stamp, 
to perform millions of test tube experiments at the same time. So how does this work? Well, each microfluidic chip contains millions of droplets of a fluid, like water, and they're separate from each other. And each one of those droplets provides the experimental testing grounds, sort of like the test tube in the past. And so you do an experiment in all these little droplets, and you have millions of experiments being conducted at the same time. So with each of the experiments being complete in each droplet of water, you then funnel the droplets of water through a laser and the laser can determine the results of each experiment. The problem is that in the funneling process, often the droplets will collide and burst, which ruins the result of many, many experiments. So the paper today shows that if you place a little traffic circle near the exit where the droplets come out of, it increases the rate of the flow of the droplets. You get one one thousandth the number of collisions that you normally would, and you can increase the experimental efficiency by up to 300%. This is huge. There's subtleties to this procedure, however. You have to make sure that that traffic circle is placed just right, or it turns out you have no positive effect whatsoever. So they looked at putting the traffic circle just the right size and just the right location, so you do get this optimal efficiency. So what's the advantage to such a system? Well, this research could have huge implications for things like screening drug compounds, where you have a bunch of test tube experiments and a bunch of droplets all going on and you want to filter them through a laser as fast as possible. It even has implications in the field of 3D printing, which has a similar sort of thing. You have a bunch of droplets of a fluid moving through a needle that prints a substance. And if you want that substance to be printed as fast as possible, perhaps creating an obstruction in the needle would allow that to be done quicker. I hope you enjoyed this short video today. I have tons of links in the description if you wanna further research into any one of these topics. Please remember to like and subscribe for more news and Python tutorials in advanced physics problems.